everybody, it's time for another Mini Mondays, and today I'm going to be talking about my top five favorite romances. Now this might come as a surprise to some of you because I have gone on record several times saying that I do not like romances. I don't ship, I hate romances, I think that they derive, they, they take away from the plot, they're really annoying, they're often very tacked on, but I do have some that I actually like. Like, five of them. I can only think of five, so perfect length for this list. Now I'm doing this because it's nearly Valentine's Day um, and I couldn't do a mini Wednesdays so it's gonna be a mini Mondays. So whatever, I'm done justifying this list. Let's talk about my top five favorite romances. Now this can be from anything, you know, animation, video games, movies, live action, books, whatever, manga, anything like that. It's just anything that is an actual canon romance can be considered here. So, you know, shipping, doesn't count, you know, that's just your imagination, doesn't count. So anything that's canon counts here. So with that said, let's take a look, shall we? So number five is Sheen Estevez and Libby Fulfax from The Adventures of Jimmy Neutron Boy Genius. So this one is high up on the list because they are kind of not exactly in a relationship through the whole thing, but they do have some romantic leanings more towards the end of the series. But I actually think that Sheen and Libby are kind of good together. I mean, Sheen is very spastic and crazy and Libby is very calm and collected, but I like that even though Sheen is like her polar opposite and how spazzy he is, she actually does seem to see the good parts in him. Like, she respects his craziness. She doesn't try to change him or anything like that. She just kind of rolls with it. And even in his weird gestures of love, like giving whole, a whole bunch of, um, it, like a whole bunch of action figures to her and doing weird dances and stuff, like Ultra Lord related things, she just, she rolls with it because she understands that he's trying to express his love for her the only way he can, which is just to be weird and, and spazzy, basically. So I, I do think that they are kind of cute together in that they, they sort of complement each other with their differing personalities. So yeah, uh, surprisingly, that's number five. And number four is Cloud Strife and Tifa Lockhart from the Final Fantasy VII series. So not just Final Fantasy VII the game, but Crisis Core and Advent Children and On the Way to a Smile, just anything Final Fantasy VII related. Now, well, a lot of people seem to think that Cloud and Aerith are the people, are the two that should be together, but personally I think that Cloud and Tifa are much better in a late relationship, and they do actually have a real relationship later on um, in the On the Way to a Smile story and in Advent Children. Now, the thing that makes this interesting is that there is a lot of depth to their relationship that may not be really obvious at first. Tifa does seem to really genuinely care about Cloud, but it's not like she cares about him just for no reason. She does see the side of him that's not as pleasant as the side that he wants to show her, you know. He wants to be strong for her so that she'll like him. And that's the whole reason he goes on his his quest, if you will, to become a soldier. So everything he does is for Tifa, and Tifa recognizes that, which is something I like. But the thing is, is that she isn't stupid about it. You know, she recognizes when something is wrong with Cloud, but she doesn't just abandon him or just be like, Oh, that's just Cloud! You know, she tries to figure out what's wrong with him, to try and coax his real self back to him. Which I think is really admirable. There is, like, a balance between their relationship, which I think is really cool, actually, is that Tifa's not just some dumb bimbo with big boobs who just wants to get with Cloud because he's the protagonist. They have a history together, they balance each other out well, and she is not dumb in the relationship. And then later on, when they do actually enter a real relationship, after everything in Final Fantasy VII is done, you can see that there's a lot of lingering ghosts in their relationship. Like, Cloud is trying hard to kind of be a person again after what everything that happened to him and Tifa is trying to help him but she can see that he's not really assimilating very well because of his history uh which I'm not going to get into because you know that's not the topic of this video but I appreciate that she is his pillar of support and he tries his best to you know be there for her but it's just not really in his capabilities so it is more of a one-sided relationship, I'd say, but I just find it really good when they are working together, when they are in a relationship and they can express their love to each other. I think that their relationship is much more genuine than anybody who puts Cloud and Aerith together because that is what a lot of people would think Tifa is, is just, you know, some girl who just likes Cloud for no reason. Like, I don't understand why Aerith likes Cloud, but Tifa has a really good long history 
well, not a good history, but a long history with Cloud. And she recognizes when something's wrong and she tries to make him better. So it's an improving relationship. It's not perfect. And that's what I think makes it really good. So yeah, that's number four. And number three is Tweak Tweak and Craig Tucker from South Park. So this relationship actually hasn't been on for too long, but when it did start, I was genuinely pleased with it. Now South Park has not really been great with relationships. They're usually sort of one-off jokes or just the topic of that one episode and then they're just never mentioned again, uh, barring a couple of Kenny's relationships and things like that, which have never been handled particularly well. But I believe that the relationship between Tweak and Craig, which started off as a joke about how uh, there were a bunch of um, Japanese girls who moved to South Park and then they kept drawing gay pictures of Tweak and Craig. What I appreciated is that even though it started as a dumb joke, they actually formed a real relationship with each other. And it's so well put, especially in the newest season when Tweak is, he, it's another relationship that really complements the participants and that Tweak is constantly freaking out about everything all the time because, you know, he's, he's got ADD, he's probably on meth. Uh, he drinks all this coffee which has the meth in it and things like that, and Craig is just one of those guys who just doesn't give a shit about anything. Um, he's just really calm and collected all the time. So again, this is a really a good relationship for balance because he, he shows that Craig, despite his completely blasé attitude towards everything, can take this relationship, which wasn't even a real relationship to begin with, seriously. Like, they don't have to go crazy or anything like that, but it shows that Craig can show some real affection towards somebody he didn't even like at first, because originally they were enemies with each other, technically they were fighting. I mean, it wasn't anything serious, but... That's what I appreciate, is that their relationship has evolved over a long time. And now they can actually express their love. And even in South Park, the fractured butthole, or sorry, fractured butthole, uh, they do express their relationship to each other. Like, it's really shown, especially in Tweak and Craig's character cards, where it says that they're both homosexual and that they're both in a relationship, which I just appreciate that they didn't take the topic of two young boys exploring a relationship together and just make it like, haha, it's all funny and everything like that. They did it at first, but then they made it into something really sweet and really genuine, and it feels real, unlike most of the relationships that have happened on that show, and most relationships in media in general. It just never feels real. But to them, I think they have real chemistry together just because of how different they are from each other. And I think, I, I, I really hope that they maintain this relationship in the future because I think that it's one of the best aspects of South Park as of now. Um, you know, I, I'm not too happy with the season so far, but that's one aspect that I think has been going on that is very well handled. It's definitely better than Cartman and Heidi's relationship, but that's another topic entirely. If I was going to make a worst romances list, I would be on it for sure. Anyway, so that's number three. And number two is The Soldier and Janna from the TF2 comics. So this is weird. I, I wouldn't really expect to put this on here because Team Fortress 2, it is my favorite video game of all time, but it's not really about romance or anything like that. It's about nine dudes who kill each other in the desert. But the story has been explored, like deep, this deep story has been explored in the TF2 comic series that's made by Valve. So there's lots more character development, a lot more character interactions, and a lot more story information, things like that. And one of the characters that's comic only is the Heavy's sister, who's named Jana or Zana, I don't know how you say it, but she Russian name and she has not seen an adult man for like 30 years and so when the soldier and the scout and the others come to Russia to try and convince the heavy to come back uh, he, he meets a heavy sister Jana and they just have sex right there after that you would think that oh that's that's lame you know but she tags along with their group and the soldier and relate and, and Jana have this adult adorable relationship where it's two complete idiots just being idiots with each other like they're perfectly content to just wrestle naked covered in honey like Jana is just totally on board with the soldiers complete insanity and that's what I love is that there's no there's no there's no hang-ups with her she's just like yeah whatever we're just gonna love each other like 
The soldier makes her a necklace of human ears and she she kisses him because of it. She's super in love with him even despite his weirdness. And I just think that even though they haven't had much time together, they have this real chemistry a lot like Tweek and Craig. Just they're so adorable together in their own stupidity. And they are willing to fight for each other. Like Janna is willing to cut her hand off just so she could save the soldier. And, and the soldier in his own really insane way, he, give, he, he talks to Janna like, he, you know, he calls her his little maggot pie and things like that. Like, he, he mixes this lovey-dovey attitude with his, uh, uh, you know, army drill sergeant nature. And it's just, it's adorable. I don't really know other way to describe it than it's just adorable to see them together. Now, I don't think that she needs to come into the game at all, obviously. It's kind of a boys club, that game. But still, I think that as long as they explore their relationship a little bit more in what's going to be left of the comic then I'd be happy with that. I do think they are truly cute together with some real chemistry, for sure. And that's number two. And number one is the Mighty Monarch and Doctor Girlfriend from The Venture Brothers. Now, how could I not put this as my number one? This has to be my favorite animated romance of all time, just because of... It, it, they're basically the amalgamation of every other person I've put on this list, but in the two characters themselves. It's a, a relationship that has balance, because Dr. Girlfriend is a lot more measured than the Monarch is, because the Monarch is your your typical, like, Ah, I'm gonna get you, screamy villain type thing. But he's got the passion that drives their villainy forward. So there's a real complementary person. Their personalities complement each other so well. And Dr. Girlfriend is a lot more intelligent than the Monarch, but she does doesn't look down on him because of it. The monarch needs Dr. Girlfriend. You, you could see, you, you would think that once they broke up, like any time they were separated, he would just be like, ah, let's just go bang a bunch of women, who cares, you know? But he needs Dr. Girlfriend. Like, it's a big part of the story, their relationship, and it's just, it's done so well. It doesn't feel superfluous in any way, exploring their relationship you know, all through getting married and having marital problems, but still loving each other and still having a close relationship. The fact that Dr. Girlfriend is so willing to fight for Monarch's right to arch Dr. Venture is just, it's so sweet to me. Like, it's its perfect parts bitter and sweet, because bitter in that it, it's, it's amusing how they, you know, they try really hard to arch Dr. Venture and they don't they don't ever succeed because they suck at it but they just keep trying you know they just keep trying to do it like the monarch is trying so hard to arch Dr. Venture and Dr. Girlfriend is his pillar of support and that's what I appreciate she's smart she's beautiful she is his pillar of support and she's just you know she's always there for him and you could tell that they genuinely love each other and that's that's what I hate about so many animated romances is that you never get the sense that they really love each other it's always just some dumb infatuation or joke or something like that but do, what the monarch and doctor girlfriend have is real love and I can respect that for sure and it, I just love when they're always the role-playing you know things like that it's just I get the sense that they are trying to spice up their relationship because you know, they're, they're villains, they, they want to have a spicy relationship so that they can, I guess, translate it into their villainy work. Uh, just, they are, they're cute, they're funny, they're genuine, they're passionate, and I just, I couldn't imagine one without the other. They are, they are the perfect couple, in my opinion. So yeah, those are my top five favorite romances. Maybe I, I, I'm not the best person to talk about this. Maybe I'm a little bit too cold for romance. I just don't understand it really. But you know what? If you have a favorite romance, feel free to post in the comment below. It's going to be the day of love in on Wednesday and I'm not going to spend it with anyone, but hopefully you do. And hopefully some of the romances that you like or these romances too can give you a warm fuzzy in your heart. I don't know. I, I, I just, I just don't know. But yeah. That's all I have to say about that.